Okay, I'm going to introduce uh, back propagation, uh, and I'm also going to provide you with some additional resources on this, but I just wanted to give my own short tutorial on how uh, back propagation works in uh, a very simple uh, network to start with and then this more complicated uh, two-layer network, okay? So I just want to give an overview before I go to the simple example, and then in the next video I'll do the more complicated example. Okay, so the idea with backpropagation is that uh, these inputs, x1 and x2, are going to be fed through a network. Uh, they will uh, be processed by a hidden layer and then finally read out uh, by the uh, readout neuron Z. And the point is that we would like this neuron uh, Z okay, to be equal to some target value given uh, X1 and X2. And the point is to tune the uh, weights, W1, W2, W3, J1, and J2, um, as well as potentially some uh, biases like theta2. And uh, in order to do that, we calculate the error as a function of the output value of z, just as the uh, squared difference between z and its and its desired target value. Okay, so in order to do this we need to figure out how this error, okay, this error changes as we change our uh, weights. So uh, that is precisely the definition of a partial derivative of e with respect to wj. Now the issue with this is that um, z is not directly, well it is technically directly a function of wj, but you, you sort of have to go back uh, two layers in order to see how wj shows up in the expression for e. And typically when you write e, you just write it as a function of z. And so in order to compute dE with respect to uh, wj or uh, dejj, okay, we are going to need the chain rule, okay, for multivariate functions, okay, and this is something you would have learned in Calc 3, um, so I can, I can post a, a video on that that'll demonstrate that for you uh, nicely, okay? Once you compute these partial derivatives, effectively the way that you update wj is to just take wj and subtract from it some learning rate times the error as partial derivative with respect to wj. Or similarly, jj would be updated jj minus r d e d j j okay and again this r is what's often called a learning rate okay and this is really something that you hand tune and so there are automated algorithms for selecting what r should be uh, or you can sort of pick it yourself this is something that you explore uh, in the homework in problem 1c, or I think actually um, um, for, for uh, problem 4 specifically, the, the Python coding example. Okay, so um, the point is back propagation allows us to reduce the error of the output with respect to the desired target, and we're going to do that by computing the partial derivatives of the error with respect to all the weights, and then uh, updating the weights 
according to these updated equations, okay? So in order to see the mechanics of this, uh, in the simplest possible example, um, let's consider the following situation, okay? So this is basics of backprop, a simple example. All right, so I said it was simple and it is. Let's say we have some input, some weight, and some output Z. Okay, so just a single layer perceptron. And let's say, moreover, okay, that we take um, Z to just be W times X. Okay, this is not typically what you want to do in a feed-forward neural network, just a linear transfer function. But we're just going to do it so we can see how all of this works. Okay? And this is our desired restrictions, I'll call them. Okay? We'll say that x equals 1. We want that to imply that z equals 1. x equals 2. We want that to imply that z equals 2. Okay? Well, we know how we would want to solve this, okay? The answer really is that we would like w to be equal to 1, and then both of those restrictions are hold, okay? But we're not going to jump to that conclusion, okay? We're going to say what does back propagation do in this situation, okay? So let's say that initially w is equal to 0, okay? And we will just basically alternate between conditions, okay? What do I mean by this? I mean that initially, let's take x equal to 1, okay? And we are going to compute what z equals wx is, okay? Well, we know what that is. It's 0 times 1. That's going to be 0. Okay? So, our error is going to be 0 minus 1 squared, which is just 1. Okay? And our error function now is going to be, because we know what our desired output is in this case, z minus 1 squared. Okay? So then de dz is going to be equal to 2z minus 1, okay? But we don't just want de dz. What do we want? We want de dw, okay? Well, what does the chain rule tell us about, uh, sorry, about de dw? I said the right thing and, and wrote the wrong thing. It says that, well, we can get that by computing de dz, times dz dw. Okay, simple as that in this case. What is dz dw? Okay, well look up here for what z is. z is wx. Okay, so dz dw is x. Okay, so that means, yeah, we'll go on to the next page, that dE dw is equal to 2z minus 1 times x, okay? And so in our case, if we flip back here, what's z? Well, remember z was uh, 0, right? x was 1, and that's the only ingredients we need to fill in now. So we have 2 times minus 1 times 1. So I get minus 2, okay? Now, in order to do our update, we um, just want to compute the new W, okay, from our uh, lear learning rate times our, um, our error partial derivative, okay? And let's just take R to be equal to 0.25. Okay, you could, ex, you know, experiment with different learning rates, okay? That's always a good thing to do, but let's 
pick that value to have something concrete. Well, in that case, we get 0.5 for w. In this case, so our new value of w is 0.5. Okay, and if we look back actually at our um, desired w, the one we sort of know to be where we'd like to converge, well, that's w equals one. Okay, so we're getting closer. Let's do another step. Okay, x equals two. In that case, z equals wx. This is going to be 0.5 times 2, so we get 1, okay? E is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 squared. We get 1 again, okay? D E D Z is equal to 2z minus 2. Dz dw is again equal to x, so that means that de dw is equal to 2z minus 2 times x, which ends up being minus 4, okay? So we get uh, 2 times minus 1 times 2, okay? So our new w then is going to be, let me just write it as an equal sign, okay? It's going to be our old w, which was 0.5 minus our learning rate times minus 4, and that's going to be 1.5, okay? So we've overshot, okay, our desired value. Let's see what happens if we maybe just take one more step, okay? If we take one more step, x equals 1, okay, z equals 1.5 in this case, if we compute it, because it's just 1.5 times 1, okay? e is equal to 1.5 minus 1 squared. This is 0.25, okay? D, E, D, W, we already have the formula for this. It's going to be 2Z minus 1, X. Turns out this is 1 in this case. So our new W is equal to 1.5 minus 0.25 times 1, or just 1.25, okay? So we're closing in on it, and if we did many more steps, we would uh, get closer and closer to that desired W. And you're welcome to check on that on your own. I just want to demonstrate, though, what's happening with our E. The idea is that there's some weight which would actually minimize our error across all values. And each time we compute DE dw, that sort of tells us the, the direction to go in our weight update, and the learning rate basically tells us how far we should step along that direction, okay? So essentially, we are descending the gradient of error in weight space, and in a typical neural network, you don't just have one weight, you're going to have many weights, okay? So you can imagine you have this high-dimensional surface of error in weight space, and each time you do an update, you're going to update your weights. Now you can probably immediately see an issue with this that is that you might get stuck in local minima, right? If you're close enough to a minimum, if any of you have looked at things like Newton's method, you know that that can happen. You get stuck in a local minimum, but it's not the global minimum. It's not the best you can do. So there's many methods for getting unstuck, like uh, sort of re-randomizing your initial uh, guesses, sort of changing your learning rates throughout the, the course of, of learning um, in order to cure against that. All these different sort of rich solutions um, to this fairly intuitive approach of just gradient descent to, to minimize error. Okay. So in the next video, we'll talk about how we do learning of weights in a more complicated network, specifically one uh, where we have a, a hidden layer and a two-layer perceptron, and, uh, and where we have a nonlinearity like a sigmoid. Okay, and also post uh, or a link to another video that um, gives some good intuition for uh, learning in, in neural networks.